Now, I don't know if you're a starter finisher, you when you start a project, you finish it, or whether you're a bit more like me, a flitter, you, you just seem to move from one thing to another. But when it comes to life, there's really only one viable option. I've started, so I will finish. And that's what I want us to think about today. Over the last months, we've all had to learn endurance. We've had to dig deep. We had to learn resilience to keep going in our own strength and in God's strength, but individually keeping going. There has been no other option. It's been a little bit like running a marathon, hasn't it? Not that I've run one, but, but running a marathon where they keep moving the finish line and you think you're nearly there, but then the finish line moves again. It has been tough. So how do you keep going when everything in you just wants to quit? How do you keep going when there is nothing left? I want us to look back into the story of Nehemiah today and to see three things that I see in this story that Nehemiah reminded the people to remember. And three things I think if we remember, they help us to keep going. As we've looked at this story of Nehemiah, I hope there will be a point in the near future where I can look at it from a point of rebuilding the church and rebuilding uh, and, and moving forward. But we're still in the middle of the storm. So this still is a message to us of how we keep going in this season. And I've, I've done two uh, short talks already, one that just looked at a three step rule to react with prayer, to review with others and to respond with action. And then the second talk where I looked at the importance of walls and gates, walls that protect and define and gates that connect us. But today I want to go to Nehemiah 4. Nehemiah 4 finds us partway through the story. The people have started rebuilding uh, the wall and despite the opposition, despite the, uh, the threats from them, they have, they've got quite a way. In fact, they have got halfway as it says in uh, Nehemiah 6, so we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. They'd worked hard. They were halfway there. The end was in sight. But the pressures were still great. This, the circumstances on them were still intense. We read uh, a bit further on in, in Nehemiah 10, Meanwhile, the people in Judah, the, the Israelites said, the strength of the laborers is giving out and there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. They started to look at their problems. They started to look at the issues around them. Also, our enemies said, before you know it uh, or see us, we will be right there among you and we will kill them and put an end to their work. Then the Jews who live near came and told us 10 times Whenever they turn, they will attack us. Everything was against them. They were feeling absolutely exhausted. The pressures on them were very, very real. The pressures on us are very, very real. So how did Nehemiah respond? What should we do? And these are the three things Nehemiah tells the people to remember. And I think we should remember. Number one, remember God. See, Nehemiah stands up and exhausts the people with these great words. He says, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers and your sons, your daughters, your wives and your homes. So first one I want to think of is number one is to remember God. You see, rather than fixing our eyes on our problems, rather than becoming stuck looking down this is where we fix our eyes on Jesus where we choose to look at God where we choose to look at him and see things from his perspective and it really does change things two things that we can remember about God one is to remember his promises I think in in tough situations each one of us can probably find a promise that we can hold on to that can be a lifeline that we can remind ourselves that we can put on a wall that we can uh, say to ourselves every day here's here's a few examples of so many find your promise for you through this tough season in Isaiah 40 it says he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak maybe you need that promise today in Psalm 23 even though I walk through the darkest valley I will fear no evil 
for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In Matthew 11, Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. Sorry, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Do you need to hear that? Do you need to respond to that? Do you need to declare that over yourself today? And in Deuteronomy uh, 31, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's right there with you in the midst of the storm of the problem. Do you need to remind yourself of the promise of God and remind yourself of his, his goodness over you? And then secondly, I think we need to remember his faithfulness. As we remember the Lord, we need to remember his faithfulness. You, you, you will have so many stories of God's faithfulness in your life and you need to remind yourselves of those stories. You need to remind yourselves of, of his provision, his guidance, his protection, his comfort. Remind yourself of those stories again and again and share those stories with others. Share them in your home groups. Uh, tell each other those stories of God's faithfulness so that you can see what well, God did it then. He will do it again. I, I love our, our home group, particularly our, our WhatsApp. There was a, um, a couple of weeks ago, there have been quite a few prayer requests have gone up. And then one afternoon evening, I think there have been four wonderful answers to prayer that were testified to. What a great way that that encourages us to keep going and to keep praying when we see God's faithfulness. So we can remember his promises in the word and we can then see his faithfulness in our lives as we remember the Lord. And what kind of God are we remembering? Well, the name I am, the Bible says, remember the Lord who is great and awesome. Great just reminds me he is beyond our situations. He is far bigger and greater than our problems. And awesome, that's not the American, hey, everything is awesome, but this is the uh, awe, reverence. In some translations, it says, remember the Lord who is great and terrible. This is the greatness, the, the, uh, the majesty of God. And we need to remember that God is God, that he is the creator, the sustainer. He is holy, but that he loves us as we remember God. I feel it's right to say to someone today, as I was preparing this, it is better to face a storm with God than without him. There's someone, and you're, you're, you're thinking of walking away from God because it's just too much. And I think there's someone else who you're looking in, but you actually need to choose to come into God, to walk through that storm. It is better to face a storm with God than without him. I don't know if you've been in one of those really fierce summer storms, particularly the, uh, that they have around the Mediterranean, but a couple of times, actually every time I've been in Albania on a missions trip, we've been hit by one of these storms. And uh, one example, we were, we were building a metal framed marquee on the beach. It's this big, huge marquee that we're trying to put up and construct. And as we were doing this, the storm came in. And we could see it in the distance and we could see the black clouds and we started to feel the wind and the, and the gales increase and then the rain hit. And effectively, we were holding on to a, a huge metal parachute as the winds whistled in. And it was horrendous. Trying to hold this marquee in that wasn't tethered down properly to stop it from blowing down uh, the, the beach whilst we're right in the middle of the storm. Another time, it was at the end of uh, uh, running a kids camp and the team were relaxing by the swimming pool and it was, it was glorious. But you could then again see the storm coming in the, in the distance as the clouds and the wind uh, increased. But on that occasion, we could hide under a very secure structure and watch the storm go by. It is better to be in the storm with God rather than without him. Don't walk away. So we need to remember God. The second thing that Nehemiah reminds us is we need to remember others. We are not struggling alone. We may be physically distanced, but we shouldn't be socially disconnected. You see, Nehemiah goes on and he says, doesn't he? He says, remember the Lord who is great and awesome. And then he says, and fight for your brothers, your, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. Remember, you're with others. That word brothers doesn't mean literal uh, your brother and sister, 
but he's talking around brethren or community. Remember your church community. Remember your families and fight for them. We are in this together. Please note, it says remember, yeah, or fight for your brothers. It doesn't say fight with your brothers. And this will be another talk, but we need immense grace in this season. When we're tired, when we're frustrated, we need grace to have the right words and the right responses so that we are supporting each other in deed and in word. But that's another talk. So what might this look like for us? Well, it's, it's something practical, isn't it? And actually, Nehemiah, uh, either side of this verse in verse 14, uh, gives us a little bit of, of indication. In verse 13, he says, Therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears and bows. He put people in a place of protection whilst others were working. And then a little bit later on in verse 16, it says, From that day on, half of my men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows and armour. You see how the people arranged themselves so some were working and some were supporting and protecting. And I'm just going to hand over to Sarah now who will just share a very practical thing that we can do in this season to be a support to each other. In verse 13 it says, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears and bows. This time's a really, really challenging time for so many of us, not least of all those with young families. Juggling childcare and homeschooling and jobs is really, really hard. And whilst those of us who aren't in that position would love to be able to offer help and support in practical ways, this help's currently restricted. But Despite the restrictions, there is one really powerful thing that we can do to support them, and that is to pray. And just like in the verse in Nehemiah, where people were posted beside families, I would like to pair up the families at Kings who have young children with people across our church family who can commit to praying for them in this season. So if you would like to commit to pray for one of our lovely families, please get in touch with me through WhatsApp or email and I'll pair you up. Let's cover our families, of the parents, the children, let's cover them in prayer in this season. So that's a very practical way. I encourage you to either take advantage of the support being offered or offer to be a supporter. But also alongside that, remember we can continue to just be an encouragement to someone, to uh, to phone someone up, to invite someone out uh, for a walk, to send an encouraging message. There are so many ways and things that we can do in this season as we remember the Lord and as we remember others. And then finally, I just want us to think of one more thing to remember. And this is remember why. We need to remember the Lord, fix our eyes on Jesus. We need to remember others that we're not alone that we can be a support and they can support us. But ultimately we need to remember why we're doing all of this. Nehemiah and the people had a really clear call of the why. They were rebuilding the wall. That was their why, their vision. And in the busyness, in the tiredness, we can lose really quickly the why we we're, um, what we're about. And for us, why do, are we the people of God? Why do we... Uh, follow Jesus? Why do we do church? I think can be summed up in uh, an answer Jesus gave when he was asked what's the greatest commandment and he gave two. He said love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind and love your neighbour as yourself. That's the why. To love God and to love others. That's the why we do church, to love God and to love others. That's the why we persevere through difficult circumstances, to love God and to love others. There's a world out there that needs to know there is hope. There's a world out there that needs to know that God is there for them. There's a world out there that needs to know that there is a God who is offering forgiveness and a second chance. There is a world out there that needs to know that God is a God of love. And we are the ones who need to take that out to them. 
parents, it might be that you need to, as you love God and you love others, it may be towards having to, uh, towards your children, to show them the love of God, or towards your spouse. It may be that for all of us, there's someone in church that we need to demonstrate God's love to, that we need to remind that God loves them, that we know is just slightly on the edge, and we need to gently draw them back to the loving arms of the Father. There will be neighbours, there will be work colleagues, there will be family members that need to know that they are loved by God. That's the why we keep going. That's the why we persevere so that we can demonstrate the love of God to those around us. So yes, we are in difficult circumstances. Yes, the season is hard and is tough. But we've started and we will finish. We will see the goodness of God in this land. We will see his kingdom established across this community. So church, keep going. Keep remembering God and his goodness. Keep reminding yourself of his promise over you. Keep reminding yourself of his faithfulness. Keep remembering others and looking out for others and doing what you can do to be a support. And keep remembering why we do this, to love God and to love others. <laughs>